Hello, friends, and welcome. Five two notes completion. Let's take a look, see what we got. In five two, we're talking about congruent polygons and their corresponding parts. So, as you can see here in what we will learn, identify and use the corresponding parts, and of course, a new theorem, the third angle theorem. Alright, so all this stuff. Recall that two geometric figures are congruent if and only if a rigid motion, a composition of rigid motion maps one onto the other. So you're not changing the size or the shape of these things. You can potentially be moving it around like we do from here to here. Flip it, turn it, slide it. But you're not changing the size of it. It's rigid motion. Alright. Corresponding sides and angles remain congruent. So that's the main take of all those words right there. Now the corresponding angles, the angles are going to match up from one triangle to another, and the sides will match up as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. When you write a congruent statement for two polygons, always list the corresponding vertices in the same order. You can write congruent statements in more than one way. So the, the way you set up the first three letters doesn't matter as long as you match up like A, B, C or B, C, A. doesn't matter what you start, but you got to match up the proper letters to correspond with it in the second statement. For instance, let's take a look at example one. Based on these markings, we know which angles correspond with the angles of the other triangle. Correspond means they're congruent to. Single loop on L, single loop on R, double loop on J, double loop on T, etc. Same thing with the sides. JK has a single slash. ST has a single slash. So, quite simply, our corresponding angles in no particular order are J with K, I'm sorry, J with T, K with S, and L with R. Corresponding sides, of course, are listed there based on the slashes. All right, example two, using properties of congruent figures. Well, this is the key statement here, my friends. When they come out and tell you these four letters or these three letters are congruent to these four letters or these three letters, that is a powerful statement. That tells you D goes with S, E goes with P, F goes with Q, and G goes with R. Arr. All right? So you can use that information to find the values of X and Y, like we say here. So since we know F, G is congruent to QR, how we know that? The last two letters, the last two letters. So FG, gots the gots the gots the, match up with QR, all based on the order with which they write the letters. So that's when I tell you that that is a powerful statement. That's what I'm referring to. You can't just write these four letters and these four letters in any order. They gots to match up. D with S, etc., etc., etc. Same thing with F and G, or F and Q. You know that F got to be the same as Q because they are the third letter in each respective listing. So we're allowed to do that, which allows us to do that. All right. Example three. Showing that figures are congruent. Now we're getting into some good stuff here, my friends. We're going to start proving things in this chapter. Well, there are some shortcuts, but for right now, we have to show that all the sides of one triangle match up with all the sides of the other, and all the angles of one triangle match up with all the angles of the other. So, let's see what we got right here. They gave us some help. So, the given information, they tell us that angle... A is congruent to angle C. That's given. They also give us another pair of angles. Angle A, B, C. I'm sorry, A, B, D. 
congruence at angle C D B by the double slashes around. Now check it out. How can we get it? So we're missing a pair of angles. We want to show that that angle and that angle are the same. Ooh, they gave us some information right here. So you're going to use lots of stuff that you've learned in the past. We've got parallel lines cut by a transversal. So we know that angle A, D, oh my gosh, D, B is congruent to angle C, B, D because they are alternate interior coming back at you. So there's all of our angles. Now what about the sides? We need to, we don't have this middle side. We've got a single slash with a single slash, a double slash with a double slash. But how are we going to be able to tell that the middle is congruent to itself? What allows you to say that something is congruent to itself? Well, that is the reflexive property. I promised you guys back in chapter two, when we talked about reflexive, you're like, yeah, no kidding. It's congruent to itself. When are we ever gonna use that? Well, this is a scenario where when you have two triangles and they share a side, or maybe they share an angle, that is going to allow you to say that the, that the segments or angles are congruent to themselves. The reflexive property. You're gonna use that more than any other one in this chapter. So here we got alternate interior example and a reflexive. All right. The monitoring progress, let's just do it together here. A couple of things we need to talk a bit. All right, so the sides are all matched up. That's all good, that's all given, that's good to go. What do we need to add ourselves? Well, the angles. What tells you that the two angles in the middle are congruent to each other. Well, what type of angles are they? They are vertical angles. That's right. You may have said it as I was saying it. Again, another very popular theorem from the past that will come into play to help us prove things. And then again, here's an alternate interior example. And then we also have it going this way. Parallel lines, transverse. So you had two transversals, so that's going to give you a pair of alternate interior angles. So we can say that P is congruent to R. And S is congruent to Q. Alternate interior. So very important page here, guys, as we start to progress to prove triangles congruent. They're just using a different word here, show, instead of prove. But really, it's the same concept. So alternate interior, reflexive, vertical. These are all examples of when and how we would use these theorems to help show triangles congruent. There's a couple more, but these are the main ones that we're going to use. All right, the theorem from this section is called the third angle's theorem. And it's pretty simple, guys. If you have if you have two angles of one triangle matched up with two angles of another, well then the third angle's got to got to got to be congruent as well. There's no room for error. They add that up to 180. So you got that going for you. So you can use the third angle's theorem when you're trying to show that entire uh, triangles are congruent. So for instance, like find the measure of angle P. Well, in this case, I've got a right angle and a 52. A right angle and a 52. So the slashes mean those are congruent. So whatever B would be, P would be. So 90 and 52 off of 180. You got 38 degrees for B and P. 
All right. Pause it. Try the monster in progress question. And we'll wrap it up for today, my friends. All right. Welcome back. Hopefully you got a little something like this. For number four, DCN, D to C to N would be 75 degrees. Same as R. Find this missing angle in the middle, 37, by subtracting them off of 180. And then what additional information will we need to conclude? Well, we got all the angles congruent now, so we would need all the sides congruent. They gave us one pair, but they didn't give us any other information. So we would need to know that DN was the same as SN, and we would need to know that DC is the, was the same as RS. All right, guys, we're taking our first step into a larger world in this section. Peace.